Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to a previous video, somebody asked me to create the next-gen Chinese spacecraft. And looking at it, it does look like it is lunar capable. And since I'm in the process of making a whole bunch of lunar hardware, including the three uh, lunar lander proposals for NASA, the Gagayan spacecraft, which I consider to be potentially lunar capable, and uh, other things, I decided to go ahead with this, but um, I haven't made the spacecraft yet because I didn't have the launcher. So this is actually the Long March 5, which would be launcher for the spacecraft if it's going to the moon. I don't know if it can do it. Uh, maybe they need a bigger launcher. It might be, but we'll see. First, I have to test the payload capacity of the Long March 5E, which is the high altitude version, if you will. Uh, the one that's meant for high Earth orbit. The Long March 5B is the one that's meant for low Earth orbit, and that lacks the upper stage. So what we have here is a dummy payload here of 14 tons, which is supposed to be a GTO capacity. And uh, that's off of a website, so we'll check that. And so we've got the fairings, and then there's an upper stage here. The second stage is a Hydrolox second stage. I have no idea what it looks like here. I have no photos. <laughs> I, I know that it's sort of this kind of hydrogen oxygen tank arrangement similar to Delta. So that seemed to be from diagrams, but otherwise I don't know the look of it in detail. Uh, it seemed from a diagram that the engines were actually tilted in so that if one fails, the other can point directly through the center of mass. But anyway, these are YF-75D engines. They're basically like early RL-10s. Uh, they get 98 kilonewtons and uh, 441 seconds ISP. So that's what we're going with. I have no idea about the mass, but that's all right. I Because I only had the mass of the full stage anyway including the engines, so I just took that mass out from the tank mass and it'll work out. Uh, so I don't have their independent mass, but as far as the math for this rocket is concerned, we can do it, basically. And uh, so inner stage there, and then the core stage tank, and at the bottom here we have two YF-77s, and these, again, I don't have the mass of, but same idea. I have the mass of the full stage. And they are only 660 kilonewtons. So basically, they're like BE3Us at the bottom of this. There are two of them. And so combined, they make up the thrust of basically a Vulcane 2. And uh, you can see the ISPs at sea level and vacuum for them. And those seem fairly well established. And uh, as far as five ignitions, I don't know. I think they only have one ignition, probably. I'll probably change that. I just copied the configuration from something else. So, yeah, anyway, that is those. And then the boosters are Keralox, kerosene and oxygen burning engines. Uh, 1,340 kilonewtons, uh, 300 sea level, 335 in vacuum. These numbers seem fuzzy. <laughs> uh, these are uh, seem to be around about that area. So again, subtracting the mass from the mass of the booster produced a reasonable estimate. And we'll see how it works. It might be that uh, things are a little bit wrong, of course. But I feel more certain about this than I feel about other rockets, because at least this has launched. So we have some idea. Uh, the fins are actually built into the booster things. Uh, so I don't know if I want to separate those out or not. But yeah, that's all one part, the cone and then the fin there. There is a separate decoupler part there. I'm not gonna, um, no, actually I, I'll, I'll share what I have here for now, but it, of course it goes in the real rockets pack, but this will be shared as a separate thing on its own if you want to play around with it, as long as it works. So what we want to do is get this payload to geostationary transfer orbit, which is with an apoapsis of 35,786 kilometers. And we are launching out of Wenchang because I don't launch things over land and drop my boosters on people. So, uh, all right, we'll see how it works. And so the 5B is the one without the upper stage, and that can carry 20 tons to low Earth orbit. Anyway, so the numbers are pretty tight as far as getting this 14-ton 14 14 ton payload to GTO. We'll see. 
So this is what it looks like outside. All right. So SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. It seems like we have plumes. They're... Those kinds of plumes. <laughs> but, okay. It doesn't have a really high thrust to weight ratio starting out. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done roll. Eh, it's alright. So I think they already tested their next gen spacecraft. I don't know what exactly it's called except for next gen spacecraft uh, on this. So yeah, China does have this launch site on the coast that they could use. Now we need to leave substantial time to apoapsis for the core to continue burning. Well, now the plume looks alright anyway. It's, they're fairly long burning boosters, nearly three minutes. So uh, as far as the fuel I put in, it's based on burn time and the fuel mass. So make sure that those agree with what numbers were available. I don't know how decoupling is going to go exactly. The separatrons are built into the tanks as well. Got pretty high g-forces at the end of this separation. Uh, well, doesn't have the nice fling out thing going, but cleanly enough. Yeah, pretty high g-forces at the end. I didn't see any indication that they um, have throttling on those engines, so they could sure use it. All right, fairing set. to give the most optimistic sort of situation for getting to GTO. As you can see, we still have five minutes of burn time left, and it's two and a half minutes to apoapsis, but then we have the upper stage still, <laughs> which is a whole other deal. Now, part of, most of the upper stage, not most of, part of the upper stage is going to be, uh, no, actually it is most of. Most of the upper stage is for the GTO transfer. But as far as our current thrust to weight ratio here, uh, you can see it's still 0.87 only. From this launch site, we're sort of close to the Philippines, but we're well in space and the boosters won't get there. Uh, Taiwan's over there. So, yeah, it's a pretty clear path. Pretty clear path. So I'm getting it pretty high because of the upper stage, but maybe I'm overdoing it. Okay, separation and ignition. Oh, we've got a latent roll, but we've got two engines on this stage, so it can control roll. Well, uh, well, it's still tight. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. Mathematically, uh, we need 7,800 meters per second for orbit, so we need 1,300 more, and then we need 2,400 to get to GTO. Uh, so that's 3,700 altogether and we have 3,800, so uh, that's pretty tight. And we're, we've got lackluster thrust weight ratio now, so that's going to hurt a little bit. Uh, 0.42. Okay, pitching up, as is the way with these upper stages meant for GTO. But overall looking good for 14 tons to GTO as specified. The only thing is, I don't have a sense of whether there's RCS on this stage, so I haven't put RCS. You could add RCS, that's no problem. I mean, uh, there's a nice flat surface here for you to, or, or even on this side. Put little RCS ports as necessary and little tanks. Yeah, maybe toss it up a little bit too high. I don't know if they're trying for the Ariane thing where it just keeps burning, but I think the burn time is actually too low for that, so I'm going to shut down. But I don't know if I can restart at this point without RCS ports. Um, so for GTO you have to be over the equator, and we're not over the equator yet. And the fuel can get unsettled. 
I think that's close enough though. Okay, let's try an igniting and over prograde ignition. Well, we got lucky, but yeah, RCS is probably going to be necessary for this if they don't keep it burning. But I don't know how they would keep it burning unless they could turn off one of the engines. If they're pointing both of them through the center of mass, I guess they could just go with one engine. Then they could just keep it burning. Okay, well, that's geostationary transfer orbit. A little bit past, but that's normal, actually. Uh, a little bit of spare for maybe adding the RCS and the payload adapter. I maintain that this is probably a pretty good facsimile of the Long March 5E, given its intended capabilities. Now let me take the upper stage off and see what happens with the Long March 5B. These are the two variants that have been launched. Uh, I don't know about the others. I don't like the others. <laughs> um, uh, the other two variants that seemed reasonably planned are the D and F, and these uh, both have lesser capabilities to GTO. They both have the upper stage, so they're both GTO launchers, but they have lower payload capacities. And what they do is they put um, either four smaller boosters using only one of the YF-100 engines. Uh, that's the F version. Or they put two of the big boosters with two of the YF-100 engines and then two of the boosters with just one. So basically six of them. But I... Uh, I'd be interested to see if they ever launch either one of those. So anyway, on with the test of the Long March 5B. Now, being able to remove the upper stage entailed being able to attach the fairings to this stage instead. And so, uh, well, anyway, let me reroute actually. Oh, but I put it on... Well, we don't need the interstage anymore, right. So there's this procedural ribbed payload adapter. And maybe I should make it bigger before putting it in. Uh, could do with making it a little bit taller. I guess we'll just have to deal with that. Okay. So there's a payload adapter now. And they said this without the upper stage can do 20 tons to Leo. So, okay. Okay, so this is Long March 5B. But I've made a critical error. Uh, I only put a control core in the upper stage. I'll fix that for the version I link in the video description. But for now, I'm going to sneak a avionics package. Let's go with a Delta avionics package. And two, there's a hidden node here at the same level as the fairing level for the attachment of the interstage. Um, we need to reroute to this part. Ah, okay. Now it all makes sense. Phew. All right. Now it all makes sense, but uh, it's still a little bit more. Let me bring that down to closer to 9,500 and see. Maybe 20 was just a round number. Let's try 24 tons. Okay, sort of a stout looking thing. And tagless in this case. But alright, thrall up. SAS is on. That Delta V reading is completely different now. But ignition. And launch. Uh, oh, I guess we hadn't fully spooled up. My bad. <laughs> Little bit of a drop there. Bit hasty. Well, certainly more vigorous, which means that the thrust weight ratio is going to be even worse when the boosters stop. Oh, they do throttle. Okay. Alright, so there is a throttle range. Well, according to Wikipedia, there's a throttle range. <laughs> so, the other source didn't mention that, but alright. I'll add a throttle, the Wikipedia specified throttle range to it. So that it doesn't have this horrible thrust weight ratio at the end. And separation. And fairing set. 
So it throttles down to 65%, it says. Okay, approaching orbit. And shut down 292 by 261. And we've got 228 meters per second left, so 24 tons seems about right. So it's not 20 tons. And this is more like what I would expect. So, okay. I've uh, made some changes, including the throttling of the engines and a few other things. And uh, moving the plume down a bit for the upper stage engine. This is why we test. And so this is a capable rocket to do things. I'll look into making the Chinese spacecraft a little bit later. Uh, but this could be useful for many things. We'll see. Alright, so with that I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.